Hi friends, welcome to Career Orientation Program, IPSR CAST. We are here to clear your doubts related to career in the IT sector. So again, welcome to yet another video of IPSR Career Studio. Today we are going to talk about one of the hot topics in the market right now, that is a career in the field of cloud. So why is cloud in such a great demand and who can become a cloud professional, their roles and responsibilities? All these will be discussed in this video. Today, we have Mr. St. John Providence as our resource person for IPSR CAST. Mr. St. John Providence is a Red Hat certified architect and a Red Hat certified trainer with 14 plus years of experience in the IT industry. He completed his MSc in Computer Networking from London Metropolitan University. His expertise in cloud computing, Ansible, et cetera, make him popular as a corporate trainer and has trained candidates from Americas, Europe, Middle East, Africa, and Asia Pacific. Hi, sir. Welcome to IPSR CAST. Thank you, Aishirya. Sir, I have a few questions related to cloud. So can you please explain cloud from a layman's perspective? OK, OK. So uh, I'll explain this, OK. I will explain uh, first in a simple sentence. So I can say cloud is a, a delivery of computing, storage, networking as a utility. Just like uh, electricity as a utility, water as a utility, or I can say gas as a utility. So just take an example of a, a normal college student. Okay, he wants to do some uh, IT projects, but that, that requires some resources like more computing power, more storage. Maybe if he, if, he, if he or she wants to do some high available or highly scalable applications in a production environment or in a, in a, in a college environment, he requires some uh, load balancing technology as well. So that is networking as a utility. So, okay, just forget about uh, cloud for a moment. So what the student will do just in order to accomplish this, this object, objective? Okay, so in this case, uh, he or she has some laptop or a normal system. Of course, we know that we all know that uh, some resources are required to operate this, like computing power, CPU, memory, and storage, and network devices also. So just for a temporary project or a, just for a temporary research project, what we can do, either we can hire these resources privately, right? But after doing this project, what we'll do? Pay the rent for that. Yeah. Okay, so same concept we are getting in cloud as well, but this is maintained by the cloud service provider. So the advantage of using cloud for a normal person is uh, the maintenance and, and the manual maintenance is uh, controlled by the cloud service provider like AWS, GCP, or Microsoft Azure. But in a normal way, that in a traditional way, we have to either purchase the resources or hire physically, but still we have to manage the resource internally. For example, if you want to make it highly available, we have to think about that. But if you are going for a cloud, just like, uh, as I said earlier, just like electricity as a utility or uh, uh, gas as a utility or water as a utility, just consume the resource from the provider. We don't need to worry about where exactly it is it happening or where exactly our data is stored. So all the resources is provided by the cloud providers. Uh, so sir, what do cloud professionals usually do in their job profile? And what type of tasks do they do as a part of their job? Can you please explain the roles and responsibilities of cloud architect? Okay, okay. So there are uh, different types of job, le job levels and the responsibilities. So if you are exploring a career in cloud computing, so there are several job levels and responsibilities to explore. For example, like uh, cloud administrator. So cloud administrator is responsible for uh, system configuration maintenance. And he also responsible for provisioning as per set parameters. So that is in case of cloud administrator. Another uh, job level or responsibility is like a cloud engineer. So responsible for addressing the technical issues of a cloud platform. Then cloud developer, 
who is responsible for building scalable applications using cloud. Then the top level that is cloud architect, who is responsible for making important decisions regarding company's cloud computing strategy. So what I'm trying to say is it's based on different job levels and uh, uh, skills, different kind of responsibilities will be allocated. So if you are a fresher, uh, normally uh, the professors will start with the cloud administrator, then cloud engineer, then uh, after getting a different uh, domain knowledge, he can or he or she can approach for cloud architect level knowledge. Yeah. Okay, sir. So during this pandemic, cloud was one of the fastest growing industries. So can you explain the opportunities for professionals in this particular field? Okay, okay. So before the pandemic, uh, the cloud was just an option. So that is just before the pandemic. But during the pandemic, all the IT industries got changed. So you know that the reason behind that is the working at home, I mean, working at office changed to work from home. Then learning by going into the classroom changed to virtual learning procedures. So these all require some extra computing or storage network. So cloud only the solution for that. So cloud is a must have one for all the business now. So most of the applications which are used by ourselves during these days is all bit depend on cloud. So what I'm trying to say is, so every business is going for a cloud. It's a must have one. So more opportunities are coming because of cloud adoption to most of the businesses. Okay, sir. Can you differentiate between different type of clouds like private, public, and hybrid clouds? Okay, of course, yeah, I can do. So this classification is actually based on the deployment model. So public, private, and hybrid. So those who want to consume the resources like compute, storage, network as a utility through the public network. So public cloud can be used for that kind of purpose. For example, AWS, GCP, Microsoft Azure. So these are the examples of public cloud. So because of this public cloud, examples like startup companies or some students, they want to do some projects, so they don't have any, their own resources in their premises. So just for a temporary projects or for a temporary research projects, they can, uh, get the resources temporarily. So they need to pay only pay as you go. So you can get the resources on demand and pay whatever they have used. So that is public. But some kind of customers or companies, they want to keep their own data in their own premises because they don't want to keep their data outside their geographic location. So if you go for public, our data computing, everything is happening in a, some other geographic location not in their own location. So some customers like banking, insurance sectors, or uh, defense sectors, they want to keep their data in their own premises, and they want full control over their resources, their data, and everything under full control. So for them, the, we would recommend the private cloud. But there are some other customers, they want to get the benefits of both. They want to use public resources, which is provided by public ISP, I mean, uh, public cloud providers. And also they want to keep some data privately, confidentially uh, keeping their own premises. So for, for that, they can use public as well as private. The combination is called hybrid cloud. Okay, sir. Yeah. So what are the valuable skills that should be developed for those who are looking forward to a career path in cloud and DevOps? Uh, okay, okay, so there are some few skills required to uh, enter into this field. For example, uh, for a beginner, uh, he or she should have some knowledge in OS administration, especially Linux, because the demand for cloud professionals who can design, build, deploy, and maintain uh, Linux-based administrators are on rise. So the skills of Linux is must have one, then uh, automation, so because automation is one of the most significant benefits of cloud services. So if applications can be programmed to make their own or correct decisions without any human intervention, so it can increase the efficiency. So automation can improve the efficiency of human. So start with Linux, then automation, 
Then, of course, cloud service platform expertise. Examples like expertise in AWS, GCP, that is Google Cloud Platform. Then other companies like IBM, Dell, Cisco Systems, Oracle, and OpenStack. Because in previous question, I answered the differentiate between different kind of deployment models like public, private, and hybrid. So public cloud examples like AWS, GCP, Azure. Okay, knowledge in that is required. Then uh, if, if, you, if you are a, a, a private sector with uh, banking or insurance or, or a defense sector, those who want to keep their data privately in a private cloud, okay, then they need to learn some tool which can be used to create a public cloud. So OpenStack is one of the examples for that. So Red Hat is providing a certification on that also, Red Hat OpenStack. Then, uh, of course, uh, if you are looking for a different domains in cloud, I can say based on services, we have infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. So AWS is an example of infrastructure as a service. So those who are interested in uh, infrastructure management, they need to learn about AWS, GCP, Azure, et cetera. Or those who want to learn more about platform as a service, examples like OpenShift which is container and Kubernetes based. So that also required for learning towards cloud. Then third one is uh, software as a service. Yeah, that we normally use. We don't, we, we usually use software as a service based application. So there is no specific certification for that. So in, to sum up to the requirement for cloud architect or cloud based career path should start with the Linux. So I would recommend RHCSA is the best course for learning the fundamentals of Linux because it start with the very basics. So those who are no background in computer science also, they can start up with the uh, RxCSA course. So that covers all the basic about Linux administration. Then automation is required. So that is RxC. So that is based on Ansible automation for Linux administration. Then host, those who are interested in uh, infrastructure service, then they can go for AWS, GCP, or Microsoft Azure based certification or platform based certification that is Red Hat OpenShift. So, thank you so much, sir, for joining us and sharing such a valuable information. Okay, thank you. With this, we come to an end to this discussion on career in cloud. I hope you had a great time in understanding how to become a cloud professional. Almost all top-notch companies are hiring people with certifications. So go ahead and grab this awesome opportunity. If you have any doubts related to IT career, feel free to comment below. We will be very happy to clear your doubts in the upcoming videos. Thank you.